this is Ferrari's first mid-engined road car, which makes it really quite exciting. A couple of pumps, half oh, throttle. Gotta love carbs. So this is a 365 GT4 BB. It's basically Ferrari's first mid-engine car. Yes, there was a Dino beforehand, but this is the first one to actually wear a Ferrari badge. Enzo Ferrari was notoriously mistrustful of mid-engine cars. He eventually decided to go racing with them. He just, he, he couldn't lag behind the others. But when the Mura came out, his response was, well, the, the Daytona before this, another, front engine car but this was then the response to the Miura in 1971 when it was shown in the Turin Motor Show. The only trouble was 1971 also saw the birth of another car, the Countach. Designed by Leonardo Fioravanti at Pininfarina, the shape of the BB was drawn from the P6 concept car which had been shown three years earlier. It has beautifully delicate lines, and you can clearly see its influence on later Ferraris such as the 308, the 328, and the iconic 288 GTO. However, in comparison to the startlingly dramatic Countach, it must have looked like the shy retiring option in the new supercar firmament. This 365 GT4 BB, which is soon to go up for auction with RM Sotheby's, has done less than 9,000 kilometers from new. Ferrari's claims when it left Maranello in 1974 a dry weight of just 1,235 kilos, maximum outputs of 380 brake horsepower and 300 pounds foot of torque from the 4.4 litre flat 12, a top speed of 180 miles an hour and 0 to 62 miles an hour in 5.4 seconds. So what's it like in here? Well you've got this essentially sort of monochromatic palette but then you've got these flashes of orange on the Veglia dials and obviously the bright yellow of the badge on the steering wheel which really sort of shine out from this, this palette in here. You'll notice I've matched my shoes to match the dials today as well. The overall feeling really is something you can actually sort of, you can translate it to modern Ferraris as well. You've got this relatively low scuttle and it feels always sort of very airy in here. The pedal position is much better than I thought it might be. It's actually very easy to heel and turn, or you've got a heavy clutch. Once you get used to it, it's actually pretty easy to deal with. The open gated box is much better than some of the later open, open gated boxes that I've actually driven. Things like the um, 348 can be really stubborn, but this has been lovely all day long. The engine is a flat 12. Now, BB stands for Berlinetta Boxer, but it's not actually a boxer engine, it's a 180 degree V. And because it's flat, they decided to put the five-speed dogleg gearbox underneath the engine, which, um, well, sadly, it sort of negated the point of having that sort of low center of gravity in the engine. And it's given the car a very sort of almost truncated look at the back. This is a bit of, bit of stratos in there somehow. And it's a slightly sort of mismatch in terms of the overhangs. But you've got this wonderful guttural sound from the flat 12. It's running four triple choke Weber carburetors. The 512 had carbs as well, and then went to fuel injection for the later model. But carbs is where it's at, of course. As a result of the carbs, when it's cold, it can be a little, little bit fluffy from sort of low revs, but higher up, really smooth. The steering is actually lovely around the straight ahead but then obviously wakes up as you get more lock on those high sidewall tires look like donuts don't they but i love that feeling you get leaning on those high sidewalls it gives you such a lovely feeling of floating through corners we're obviously not going to do any big skids today but even so you can just feel it moving around you get on the throttle working through the corners through this long corner of the back straight. Just feed it in, feed the throttle in. It 
people tend to know the name 512BB rather better than the 365. 365 obviously was in the Daytona as well, the front engine car that preceded this, and nobody quite knows why they switched the sort of the nomenclature at this point because 365 refers to the sweat volume of each individual cylinder in the car, and was how Ferrari had always labelled his cars before that. Whereas 512 means five litres and 12 cylinders. Why those things? There probably isn't any reason at all. Just whim. This particular car, chassis number 18001 had assembly sequence number 172, and was originally sold from the factory in Giallo Fly, which is of course bright yellow. It was subsequently exported to the United States in 1981, where it was painted black, and spent nearly 30 years in California. Strangely, the 365BB wasn't originally offered for sale in America. This was partly because Enzo simply didn't think that customers would get the whole concept of a mid-engine road car, but it was also partly because he didn't think it was worth adjusting the car to comply with America's extra safety and environmental regulations. You'll probably notice the single wing mirror here. The car's actually left the factory with no wing mirrors at all, which gave it a lovely, beautifully pure look along the bodywork, but wasn't exactly practical. So, uh, yeah, one wing mirror, a later addition. Got discs all around, the braking is surprisingly good actually. There's a sense of that engine being right in the cabin with you that I think makes this car really special. What a lovely thing. Whoever buys this at auction on the 14th of May is going to have a very lovely thing. Just 387 of these original 365s were produced, so it's much rarer, as well as being lighter and more powerful than the later 512s, which I think makes it extremely desirable indeed. I love it. To see Richard Meaden driving a Countach that RM Sotheby's had up for auction recently, just click on the left. And to see our video on the Ferrari 250 short wheelbase, click on the right. And of course, go to the Evo YouTube channel on the website on May the 14th to watch the auction live when RM Sullivan's will be selling this and several other very lovely things indeed.